Hello and welcome to another IAPC and E CNM uh, CPD business building call. Uh, welcome back, Jennifer. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you. You're welcome. I'm Dawn Campbell, your host uh, for this call, and this is call two of five. So I'm not going to do a big introduction because we kind of ran out of time last time with people's questions uh, wanting to talk to Jennifer. Um, so Jennifer Helen Popkin, a nutritional expert, speaker, coach, mentor and advocate is in the hot seat and uh, she's a lifestyle medicine advocate. So as I say, this is two of five. So we're not going to waste any more time. We just really want to get into the subject. And today is declare your health status and goals. So what does that actually mean, Jennifer, when a client comes to you and, and has this topic, please? Well, we can't go anywhere with ourselves or our clients if we don't have a goal. And it's, it's a word that's you know, perhaps overused uh, in our world of coaching. Um, but I have to say that if we can set meaningful goals, or we can even call them intentions, um, but we can't hit a target that we can't see. So we have to have a target so that we, we, can, we can focus our energy and we can focus our vision and we can make our choices and have this ripple effect in our lives that's leading towards something. And it's, it's through the achievement of that goal and all the small steps along the way to get to that goal, that we start to sense um, a confidence arising inside of ourselves and that I can do it. And that, you know, you're, you're out of that blame shame cycle because so many of us, especially in our, in our health are in a blame shame cycle and there's nothing more disempowering. And I know firsthand what that's like. Uh, I grew up in a family of compulsive eaters, was in over addicts, sorry, overeaters anonymous uh, as a child uh, with my mom. I was, you know, my first Weight Watchers meeting was at age five. So I really understood at a young age, not only that, but they thought I had uh, leukemia. I was in and out of the hospital for years in wheelchairs. Did something was massively wrong. I had a terrible bone marrow infection. I mean, just really, really had a lot of confrontational experiences growing up where I knew that food could heal, food could kill. And I knew that life wasn't worth living without your health. And so for me, if we're going to build our businesses and we're, if we're going to be out there doing good on the planet with our coaching skills and our organizations, we've got to get our own house in order. And it's about this time that we start to fizzle out on our goals that we set in January. And that's yeah. specifically why I wanted to talk about this, because it's also for those who want to join today and who are able to join us for the remainder of the series. It's also going to be a way for you to, to, to have and create for yourselves um, and with us a space to be heard, uh, witnessed, and then there's a velocity that comes with declaring your goal. And that's why I use the word declare, because when you declare it, not only to yourself, but out into the world and with each other, those of us who are here on this call or listening to this call, it's much more powerful because there's something that's happening. You know, you're, you're, you're being heard by others. They're holding space for you to achieve and so on and so forth. And so, so many of us set a goal and it's maybe too high. I know I've done that. Has anyone else done that before? Set a goal. Set, I'm going gonna, gonna to make a million dollars this year or two million or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. And then you're like, oh, that didn't work out well. But have you ever found like a piece of paper where you've written down all these things that you wanted to do? And you're like, oh my gosh, I did that. And I didn't even know at the time. So there's something to it. I mean, even if we set a goal and we decide to change it, there's something to your intention. It's as if there's this invisible force that's just listening to you. <laughs> and like that invisible force is conspiring to help you achieve your goal. Now we get in our way. I don't know. Has anyone gotten in their way on their way to achieving a goal? I know I have. <sighs> yeah. So we all have these limits, you know, of uh, happiness and greatness that we can achieve. And then we kind of stop ourselves, take two steps forward, one step back. And then within that, you know, is if we can accept it, acknowledge it and love it, um, it, it doesn't have to stop us, paralyze us. Because I don't know about you, but I've been I've been paralyzed before. So it's my intention to help um, us, all of us today, to get clear on where we are. So that's a baseline. Okay, this is where I am today. And then from there to say, okay, this is where I'd like to be. Let's just say by the end of the year, or you, it could even be bigger than that. And then for us to look at what needs to happen between now and then uh, in order to get there. Because my, my intention is to have you ha create a sustainable goal, not just something that happens and is, uh, is fleeting, 
you know, like I can give up coffee for a week or I can, you know, that's something I don't get me wrong, but I, my intention is to, to really help you to have something once and for all this year for your health and for your lives. Mm. You guys, are you guys interested in doing that with me today? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, that's really important. Um, so if everyone could just, you know, open their hearts and their minds just for a moment, take a deep breath in. And just feel into your to your heart for a minute. Get out of your head, meaning just emptying out your head into your heart just for a second. And the thing is with our health, as you open your eyes and come back, the thing is that with our health, we all know what's right and what's wrong because we, we can feel it, actually. You can feel it when we wake up in the morning. Actually, that's one of our best indicators. Are you feeling stiff, achy, um, lethargic? Is it hard to get out of bed? These are all indicators that, that you know, you got to maybe look at some things. Not to say that you shouldn't necessarily leap out of bed every morning, you know, feeling fantastic. But these are indicators that there's maybe some some another level of health that's available to you. The morning is always one of the best indicators of kind of where we are. But as you think about your health, I'd love for you to, for this first step, to just um, set, write, have a piece of paper, or you can use an electronic uh, document, whatever works for you. So take out your paper, and I'd love for you to consider what, what you'd like to achieve with your health in the next six months. So that means from today... August by August, right? So the end of the summer. And so I'd love for you to make this goal that you set for yourself. Be one that you can actually achieve, right? So, um, you know, what if, 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 if there's weight to be lost or weight to be gained, that it's, you know, realistic, that in six months that's possible. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Colette, for sharing with us. Colette is sharing in the uh, chat box below. So does anyone want to share um, something that they'd like to work on uh, in the next six months regarding their health, that's, that they, they feel is going to take their health from where it is today to another level that will bring them more peace and freedom and joy? I'd love to hear from you what you've written down. Karen. Um, hi, um, I'm going to lose half a stone and I'm going to tone up my angel wings. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> well done. We're going to get to the how in just a moment, um, but I'd love to hear from anyone else uh, about their what, they, what they've written down. I like that time management that shared. Mm. And I really appreciate what Karen said because it was measurable, right? We know in the coaching world, SMART goals, um, and I, I'm not necessarily going to go over that acronym right now, but what I, what, I, what I think is so great about it is that if I say, well, I want to be happier and I want to be healthier, I'm going to request that today for the sake of this exercise that you get ultra specific like Karen did. I'm going to lose half a stone. And I'm going to specifically work on this, this part of my arm to, to tone it. You know, she was really specific so that she has literally every month uh, something that she can measure. She can put a tape measure around her arm. She can see that tape measure changing. She can step on the scale and she can see that measurable goal. And that sets her up for success. And so even if happiness and joy is one of your goals, which absolutely a great goal, I mean, that's, on, that's definitely on my list too, but I'd love for you to identify what that would look like. So how do you know you're increasing your happiness by 5% or by 50%? What would be the indicators that you can measure, which is a little trickier when it comes to happiness, uh, but possible, uh, that you will know that you'll be happier? So just, just food for thought for you. Um, anyone else want to share something that, that they're going to be working on in the next six months? I'll share for, one of mine. For myself, it's sleep. 
Uh, it's definitely mm. the weak link in my health protocol. I think I'm pretty healthy. Um, but I just don't seem to crack that. I I'm like the Duracell bunny at bedtime. I've got loads of energy and I think, oh, I'll just do a bit more. I'll just do this. <laughs> and then before I know it, I've asked my tired time, which happened way too early. Uh, and I always feel like there's something going on that I might miss if I sleep. And yet I know how important it is from a hormonal point of view, managing your weight, um, et cetera. But I just can't seem to crack that. So any tips on how I could improve my sleep, the quality of sleep, getting to sleep. Once I'm asleep, I'm fine. But getting to sleep, I don't want to go to bed and I can't switch off when I get there. Oh, it's such a, a big critical thing. thing. Mm. It is because, you know, it's like the simple things like sleep and water. You know, without those, uh, we keep eating all the kale and sprouts and green food, raw food that we want. It's like those things, those things. And sleep is such a vital, vital part. And it's good to know. I'm glad you mentioned that you do sleep. Once you get to sleep, you're asleep because that's a whole other issue that could be also hormonal, hormonally related. But what I would say to you is a, a routine. To stick to a routine. And that routine, I would recommend it. I mean, maybe, I don't know if you have a sauna or if you have a space that you do practice yoga, but maybe to do like a very quiet, calming yoga sequence, which would be, I know, radically different because you're usually doing to-dos and maybe even watching TV or, you know, whatever it is mm -hmm. your evening ritual is. But I would shift your evening ritual that is in a way, step-by-step -step guiding you towards bed. Um, for me, for example, oftentimes I'll take a bath or I'll do a sauna or um, I'll read. Like I won't turn the TV on because then I'll go like, you know, watch a show or something and stay mm -hmm. up later. Um, or like you, I'll get into a project, you know, like I have to really say, okay, that can wait. Um, so it's, it sounds like it's going to require some willpower. And I would just recommend a different ritual, something that will be calming to your nervous system, like a nice mm -hmm. chamomile tea or, you know, lemon verbena or, you know, like, like a, you know, valerian root <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that can help yeah. your nervous system to calm down. But really the breathing. If you could do like a guided meditation or even um, some, some breathing exercises that aren't, you know, breath of fire, but like, you know, a long exhalation, mm -hmm. you know, keeping you calm. But like the hour before you really want to go to bed, you know, perhaps insert a self-care ritual that will um, nourish you and, and mm -hmm. usher you into that state of mind from the nervous system itself. Mm -hmm. What about people who actually feel like they don't need that much sleep? I mean, the famous one is Margaret Thatcher, four hours a night. Um, and yes, unfortunately, at the end, she had Alzheimer's, which is obviously uh, one of the the, um, the the end results of having poor sleep amongst poor diet and other things. But do you actually think people don't need as much sleep as, you know, the media says there's seven or eight hours? Can we manage on a lot less and be healthy? Or is it we're deluding I think, ourselves? I think I think everyone's individual. Um, part of me intuitively feels like we're deluding ourselves. I do think we need six, minimum six hours a night. They say as you get older, you need less. I don't think that possibly can be true. We do a lot of repairs. A lot of my clients who have stubborn weight loss issues also have sleep issues. So we're actually doing a lot of work while we're sleeping. Um, I think that if you eat um, a lot of Ca you know, caffeinated foods and stimulants in your diet, you, you know, you can also like have a difficult time sleeping, think you need less because you're running on adrenaline all day, but that's only going to last for a certain time before you burn out your adrenals and your hormones get messed up and then you can't sleep at all. Um, and then there are other people who are health fanatics who are eating such little food and such high vibration food that they, you know, you could, they literally peel them off the ceiling. And when I'm fasting and whatnot, I don't feel like I need to sleep either. And so that's, that's, I don't feel exhausted either. So they're just not using the kind of energy to digest. So I think it's really different phases in your life and different needs that your body has. And, and I'm definitely not a sleep expert, but I am. Um, I see magic happen when people recover their sleep and women, especially in menopause, one of the first signs that we need a little bit of um, a little bit of hormone balancing is oftentimes when we can't sleep. And there, it tends to be, you know, uh, a need for more progesterone, but I'm also not a hormonal expert either, but I do know that's helped a lot of my clients in the past uh, to regain their sleep. Mm. I think we got a question from Colette. Just a second, mm. let me check. Um, how do you manage a sleep ritual with the rest of the family? Oh my gosh, that's so mm. hard. It's true. Well, sometimes I'll just say, you know, do not disturb. Or I actually will take a bath. Let's say there's a lot of people in the house. I'll take a bath and um, I'll put a sign on the door, like, 
free at 9.30 or <laughs> so that they know what to expect. They don't have to knock on the door. And I have these great earphones <laughs> that I use. And they really, um, I feel like I'm in my own world. Um, so I do have to set a boundary and ask that I, I not be disturbed, which is tricky. Um, but I think the sauna provides that sanctuary for me, uh, especially to kind of everyone knows when I'm in the sauna, like they're not really going to, I'm not available. So it's about, and I just set some boundaries, but yeah, the, the, the other people's needs in the house are definitely something you have to consider, but I don't think it should be the excuse. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always negotiating with our health, myself included. Um, you know, even that sleep question is a little bit of a negotiation. Like, oh, well, you know, if only get four, it's, that's fine. Like, I'll be fine. Like most people, maybe I don't need eight or maybe I don't need seven or, you know, so we're always negotiating because it's difficult sometimes to make sacrifices. Yeah. It can be challenging to set boundaries and to have the courage to get uncomfortable because, you know, I've been dieting for weeks because I've been, you know, involved in this project and on camera and, Man, I was like so happy last night when I got home and I'm like, I'm going to make this and I'm going to make that. And I just had this feast and it was like so good, you know, um, and it wasn't unhealthy at all. It was just like way more calories than I usually eat. And I've been eating for the last six weeks. Um, and I'm only using that as an example because it was uncomfortable in the beginning when I was shifting to the lower calorie diet. That's uncomfortable. We have to have courage to make the change. And oftentimes when we're setting a goal, where it means we've got to change things in our behavioral patterns, whether it's a bedtime ritual or it's, you know, what you're buying, carrying at the grocery store, or it's inserting um, the exercise that's going to be uncomfortable. I mean, I also have these wings too. I'm working on them too, Karen. <laughs> they're, they're tricky. I'm like, can I just get surgery? Cause like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to get surgery, but I mean, my goodness. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, that's a tricky thing. Um, and I think it has something to do with body fat, actually. Um, so I think I think a lot about that I mind myself, just with what, yes, I can exercise, but I think it's also cardio. You know, it's not only the toning. It's both. That's what I found for myself. But um, the do not disturb sign. You like that, Colette? <laughs> you could use a do not disturb sign. Um, no, but I think, I don't know how old your family is, Colette, but I know that um, people really respect that. And they also know that I'm a happier person when I'm done. Um, and certainly during COVID, we've had to create different spaces inside of our space, inside of our homes. Um, I think it's really important to carve out some space and time for yourself. Um, one, of, one of my health goals is to not be extreme, right? Uh, usually I'll, I'll do like a very extreme diet. And, uh, and one of my things is moderation, just being more of an intuitarian as opposed to you know, diet dictocrat. I have so much intellectual knowledge that um, sometimes it gets in the way of actually what uh, my body needs. And uh, as I develop my, my inner wisdom, I would like to follow that more, uh, not confusing it with my emotional needs, but my inner wisdom um, on what, what's going to guide me uh, towards towards what I need without being extreme. And it's it's working. I have to say, I didn't go totally extreme on this, this dieting. Um, and people are like, oh, did you do the sprout diet? And I'm like, no, I didn't this time. They're like, oh, you look great. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more comfortable in extremes because um, that's what I've known. And so this is very unknown for me. Um, and oftentimes when we set goals for ourselves, it is a little bit of that unknown. Does anyone else want to share their goal? The goal, the, the goal of sharing your goal is to uh, be, have it be heard, right? Now that, now that, that Dawn has shared her goal, in a way we're holding space for her to have a better, a, an earlier sleep. Um, and have her have a, a you know a, a easier time falling asleep because you know she's giving herself permission, <laughs> and we're holding space for Karen, um, in her in her goals. It's anyone and, and Colette as well for sharing. Thank you for sharing yours. Anyone else want to share theirs so that we can, you can be heard and witnessed and, and in that way also supported. It's totally fine if you don't want to share. I just wanted to open up the opportunity before we move on a little bit. Most beautiful. If you haven't shared, please be sure you write them down somewhere. Uh, Colette, the chat box will disappear when the call ends. So be sure that you've written down your goals on a separate sheet of paper or in a document that you can easily access. Because goals are important to set. And yes, they do get filed away, right? The piece of paper gets pushed to the side. The note isn't as high up on your uh, on your notes when you look in your phone, if that's where you keep them. But it's really important to put, to put it somewhere so that it reminds you 
It reminds you of what your intention is each day because I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm busy. At any given day, I've got about 25 things on my to-do list. Can anyone relate to that? That busy to-do list? <laughs> and the things that I don't enjoy doing, I usually distract myself from. Like, you know, do something. I don't know, what's your go-to when you don't really want to deal with something? What, what, what do you usually do? Sometimes I procrastinate or I avoid. What do you guys do? What is your... Speak up. Cleaning. <laughs> oh, right. No, I can totally relate to that. I declutter. And I wanted... Oh, yeah, that's a good one, actually. I mean, it's helpful, but it's interesting how we how you use it, right? Yeah. Um, as a strategy. Anyone else? Even if you don't want to share, I'd love for you to identify the thing that you do when you're avoiding something difficult. You know, welcome to share, also don't have to share, but definitely identify this thing. The reason why we're identifying it, because it's the very thing that's going to take you off track. It's the very thing that you find yourself, oh, I'm doing this again. And, you know, I mean, the cleaning thing, I usually clean when I'm angry. And so I don't, I mean, Karen, I don't know about you, but the, so, but for me, I, I clean when I'm angry. <laughs> I just like get it all out. Um, and I'm just on my hands and knees scrubbing everything. Um, but everyone's got their, you know, when I avoid, I'm usually, um, I'm usually getting busy. And so the reason why we're talking about to-do lists and what we do to avoid the things in our to-do list that we don't want to do, you know, like, oh, I'd rather clean the entire kitchen and declutter the bathroom and the living <laughs> closet before I actually do this. Um, and it's really important that we, we, def we define and determine and identify the, re the resistance because it's going to show up. And it's the very thing that will derail you from your goal. Because setting a new behavioral pattern, especially when it comes to something as intimate as our health, uh, can be, you know, can be challenging because we like our comforts. It's just, it's just natural. But what's the motivation, you know, for it? Now, normally I would take you through an exercise about what your priorities are. Um, but because we identified that this is health, I mean, health has got to be number one. Because nothing else can happen in your life without your health. You can't be a, a good mother, a good neighbor, a good partner, uh, a good entrepreneur, a uh, coach. You, you, there's, you, nothing, nothing can happen in your world without your health. It's got to be numero uno. And that means prioritizing yourself. And that's tricky for a lot of us because that looks like we're all women on this call. But that's tricky for a lot of us and men too because people will say, oh, you're selfish. Um, you know, because you're not making dinner or attending to my needs or doing what people expect of you based on, you know, what your setup, how you've set things up in your life. Um, and so I just want to bring that up um, as as a thing, um, because like Colette was talking about, you know, she's going to have to maybe set a boundary. Um, and people are going to be like, oh, what, you're doing something new. Yeah. <laughs> Colette said it's my pattern to fit everything in. I think Dawn can relate to that too. <laughs> she was, she's like, you feel great at the end of the day when you get like more than you more more than what's human to accomplish in a day, right? <laughs> I think it's that superwoman syndrome, isn't it? Yes, and I really encourage everyone to watch the movie, um, the newest one that came out. And I think it's a great analogy for this call because they're, they're, the theme of the movie is about getting what you ask for. Like you will get what you wish for. And we will. We will get what we wish for eventually uh, if we're really committed to it. And sometimes there's, if it's not from an intention of, of, of you know, your heart, if it's for somebody else or if it's from greed, it can backfire. It can actually cost you, right? But here we're talking about goals for our own health. And that's why we tuned into our hearts in the beginning before we even wrote down a word. word. Because this is about, you know, granting yourself your wish. And, you know, Wonder Woman needs to rest too. <laughs> she loses her power. Um, and it is, it is a Wonder Woman syndrome. There's no doubt about it. But I'd sense, I get a great sense of accomplishment when I've, when I've done a lot during the day. So I want to encourage you to look at your to-do list every day. And to identify six things, just six things that are going to bring you closer to your goal. And for you, it might only need to be three things that bring you closer to your goal. 
And usually what I have to do is I have to list it all out. I have to say, okay, these are the 25 or 30 things I have to get done. And then I have to look at my list again. And I have to say, okay, what are the top six or even the top three that absolutely have to get accomplished today, no matter what, that are going to bring me closer to my goal? And you may want to write that down, uh, just that question to ask yourself. What are the top three to six things that have to get accomplished today that are going to bring me closer to my goal? So for me, it's pausing more and listening and not reacting, right? It's about uh, really being mindful and present. Um, those, you know, that those are going to be things I have to weave in. For Karen, uh, it might be, I don't know, what, what might it be? What might be um, the top three things that would help you achieve your goal on any given day? Well, uh, specific exercises to tone this part of the body, obviously. Um, avoiding unhealthy foods that are going to put on weight rather than help me to lose the weight. Um, making sure I get out of the house, <laughs> especially in lockdown, mm. get some fresh air. Yeah. Yeah. So those are going to be the top of your list in the coming days in order for you to achieve your goal in six months. Um, and that's, it's important to, to identify that and then <laughs> to look at if there's any resistance, you know, if it's raining or, you know, if it's, um, what other options you have? Um, and then of course, uh, what are the healthy foods you love? So, and, and I think my experience has been the better I plan and prepare, the more set up for success I am because, you know, it's, it's easy to just kind of reach for this familiar stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really a little bit of effort right in the beginning to kind of re, reorient oneself to say, okay, a little less of this, a little more of that. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully, beautifully spoken, Karen. Yeah. Thank you. Don, how about you? I mean, yours is a little different because it's actually less to do's, right? It's yes. almost like the inverse. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like I've tried everything from the sauna to the hot bath to the calamine tea to the meditation. I haven't tried yoga at bedtime uh, to reading, never had a TV in the book, uh, to having a healthy mattress with no wires, to having a EMF blanket, um, to having a co copper vortex, you know, for dirty electricity, uh, you know, blackout blinds, the lot. Um, wow. So I'm really kind of at a loss uh, and I'm just thinking maybe chemically, I just have to accept I'm a night owl. Uh, I feel fantastic at night, very creative. Uh, like there's got to be a party somewhere, even if it's just on my own, uh, I can I can make a good time. Uh, but of course, I'm that's really beautiful. in the morning. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a huge problem. I was just going to ask you, what are the mornings like? I mean, I think accepting people say I'm not too bad. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm never grumpy. Uh, my husband says, you know, for five, six hours sleep, he's amazed that I'm always so, uh, so chirpy, but at night I'm really happy. I will paint, I will draw, uh, you know, write my book, ever. Uh, but I'm a slow starter in the morning. And I, I, you know, maybe I just need to accept that's who I am and that's the way it is. And that's the beauty of being my own employed coach. I don't have to do mornings. Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, accepting and, and forgiving and giving yourself permission is one thing. Um, and or before you fully surrender to it, because the mornings are so rough, it might be fun to do an experiment with um, perhaps having root vegetables in the evening, because a, a, a raw diet can make you a little um, a little overly energetic. It can. Mm -hmm. Root vegetables are really key on a raw food diet because all the stuff that we eat is upward moving and the mm -hmm. vibration of it is so high, it can actually cause sleeplessness. And so it's, I find it's really important to balance it energetically with root vegetables, okay. um, rutabagas, um, carrots, sweet potatoes. And if you want to eat those raw, you can, or lightly steamed or however you want to prepare them. But I do think it's really important to get grounded. Um, and, I, and I think that you would be shocked at how powerful breathing exercises are because they will completely shift your nervous system. 
So you mentioned a lot of things you tried. I love all the, that you really, you're really deep into it. You're so great. So hardcore. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful. But these two things actually are quite powerful. Our nervous system, no one really talks about how to tonify and tone and, and nurture our nervous system, but it's really important. Um, yeah, we are not all the same, right? That's a really good point, Colette. Yeah, acceptance is the key. There's no doubt about it. But if she's suffering, like I can also accept 15 pounds overweight, you know, um, and yeah, I can accept it and love it. And actually by doing that, it pro I probably lose the weight, you know, faster, right? That love is always the answer um, for sure. But if there's something, you know, that's not a hundred percent right. Um, you know, you have to accept it lovingly and also take the steps needed to, to, to walk in the right direction, you know, towards your path of, of freedom and, and reclaiming your health, you yeah. know, that's really, that's really um, the only thing no one can really take from us ever, right. Is our health and our, in our mind and our creativity. Like this is something we have and, we, and to cherish it is, it's just so important because life is hard enough. Not being well um, is just makes it all the, the harder. And, you know, our medical system can save lives, but there are a lot of limitations to what is possible that are the, what, what support our doctors can actually provide us. We actually have to become our own doctor. And many of these diseases that we're afflicted by in our in humanity globally are preventable diabetes, heart disease, um, you know, cancer to some degree, um, all of these things are preventable. Um, they're, they're degenerative diseases that, that we can prevent by taking steps every single day, literally like Karen on her walk, you know, getting outside, um, like me today, later on my walk, <laughs> getting outside. Um, you know, those are, those are key. It's really, really, really important. Um, would like for you to also identify what might uh, derail you. Now we talked about resistance, but I don't want to spend too much time here, but if you don't start to flag some of the things like we did earlier in the call, then they might, they might actually derail you. So I just want to um, like for me, pasta, right? I, if I make pasta, it doesn't matter how much I make, I'm going to eat it all. So like, I know that that's, that's like, that's going to be a problem for me. Right. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to practice either portion control or I'm just not going to have pasta on the table. <laughs> you know, it's just like whatever's going to work, but like pasta can definitely derail me, um, you know, for a day or so. That's a small example, but um, I'd love for you to take a look at your goals and predictably from the past, right? Thinking that this time it's definitely going to be different, not from a place of insanity, but from a place of like, I'm, I can do this and I can hold myself accountable. And just to kind of flag for yourself, what might be something that takes you, takes you off? So either write it down or, or share it. Like for me, Dawn, I just got back from the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast now in the United States. And I'm like so excited. I'm tired at nine and I'm going to get up at five. But I'm like, I want to I wanna like maintain that, you know, because, you know, it, as soon as I start to get off and get, you know, get to bed later and later, I'll, I'll start waking up a little bit later. It'll be harder for me to get up earlier. Um, so I'm really trying to practice that. And it takes some strictness. Like if I have to get up at 5 a.m., you know, uh, or 4 a.m., sometimes I get up at 4 a.m. for meditation. I have to like make myself go to bed and it's so hard, <laughs> but I have a couple of meditations that I go to that help me mm -hmm. with my breath, help me to shift, for example, but it, it takes consistency. Yeah. And for me, I have to switch my mind off, which it might sound also for you might be a, a thing to switch your, to kind of like shift into a different gear. Mm, that's major. So what, what are some <laughs> major, um, what, uh, anyone else want to share something that, you know, they, they can, they can, they, they can, they're flagging to say, okay, this might happen. And I, it's not, it's, I'm not committed to that in the next six months, or I'm committed to less of that in the last next six months. Like I have a client, she's a doctor. She saves babies' lives every day. Brilliant woman. Just can't, she's got so much work, so many lives to save. 
she comes home completely wiped out and she desperately needs to lose like 30 pounds and she's you know got all these problems and here she is saving lives she's the doctor and she just she just it sits in front of the tv just to get over her intense day and she just eats ice cream chips crackers and that's like her rabbit hole so to say it's like she either needs to have carrot sticks in the fridge and celery sticks or she's got to she's got to have had some me time um, or she's just gonna that's just predictable for her right so that's a big a big thing for her you know everyone's got their thing for me if I don't get the exercise in the morning it's really hard for me to fit it in mm-hmm. so I know that like if I you know I've got to get some certain things done because I you know, get all these distractions and people pulling me in different directions. So even if you don't share it, um, definitely write it down, right? So it's really important in your ability to sustain this goal. Because what's the use of just setting a goal just to say it, like, right? It's not really, you're not going to get that sense of satisfaction, you know, in yourself. Like, I did this. I can do this. This is who I am, not who, not just who I want to be. This is who I am. And after this call, you may want to set a few other goals for, for different areas in your life. Today, we're talking about health. You may want to say something for your, I don't know, could be your relationships with your family, your neighbors, your friends, your romantic partner, your kids. Um, you may want to set a goal related to your work. Um, and, and, and in the same context, right, um, one of the top things that I need to happen today to move me forward towards those goals. So even though our, our, our focus today is really on health, um, I'd love for you to you know, also use this framework and the way we're thinking about it um, for these other areas of your life. Let me see what, what Colette is saying. Oh, Dawn, there's a little uh, tip for you here from Colette. That's really sweet. <laughs> Um, so now I would like to get get tuned in to what it's like when you've achieved your goal, like what it feels like, what it, um, it, like in your actual physical body, like for Dawn, what it feels like when she wakes up in the morning, she gets a little more sleep because I think the indicator for me would be like, oh, she actually might need some more sleep. That's why she wakes up feeling that way. That's not, that's the only reason why I'm, you know. Um, bringing it up, Colette, let me see. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, can I, can I be honest with you, Colette? I'll wait till you say yes before I, I say this. So give me, if you give me permission, I'm going to be really, I'm going to be really honest with you. So I'll wait till you write yes in the box. <laughs> okay. So Colette's giving me permission to be radically honest with her. Because that's the only that's the only way we're going to get anywhere with ourselves and each other is if we can be radically honest from a place of love. Colette, I would assert that this is a strategy for you not to achieve your goal when you keep you know setting new ones and not committing to one goal. Um, and it can be a small goal; it doesn't have to be a big goal. You know, Karen's goal is pretty big. You know, um, this could be a small goal um, because technically, and, and using Karen's example, like. She, it's, it's a goal and then she's got all these little steps and every week she's going to be working towards that goal and it's going to be a slow, steady progress uh, if she keeps at it. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so hopefully that wasn't too harsh, Colette, but that, 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 yeah, it's important to set a goal and it's okay to change it. Right. But it, just to, an observation for you, am I doing this because I don't, I'm unwilling to commit or am I doing this because I have all these other goals that I want to do? But as long as you're achieving your goals, it's okay to have a lot of goals and to change them. But if you're not really setting a firm goal and achieving it, then it may be an indicator that it's a little bit of a strategy you're using to maybe avoid or not achieve or keep yourself in some kind of limiting cycle. I don't know if that's true. And it might not be. But it's just some place to look. So based on what you believe about yourself to be true, what is it going to feel like if you, oh, thanks, Colette. She said that's on the on spot. <laughs> spot on, great. <laughs> what is it going to feel like when you achieve your goal? 
Um, for me, when I achieve my goal, I will feel a greater sense of peace and trust in myself, and it will eradicate some fears that I'm still holding from from my mother, you know, who is constantly on the, um, you know, uh, binge purge, blame shame cycle. So the freedom from that. So for me, when I achieve my goal, that I will, I will definitely know I've achieved it when I can experience ever increasing peace and freedom and trust in my own self and, and decisions and choices I'm making. Karen, for you, what will it feel like when you achieve your goal? Uh, it will make me feel better in myself. All my clothes will fit me properly again, rather than feeling tight. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just, uh, I'm, I think everyone's got to wait where they're kind of happy. And because of lockdown, I think I've just been, you know, eating because I'm bored or I'm depressed or whatever it is, you know, and then you just suddenly turn around and you're sort of a stone heavier than you were before. And I've already lost half a stone, but. Congratulations. And then I'll be back to my normal self and I'll be happy again. <laughs> ah, that's great. Just feeling back to your normal self. That's beautiful. Yeah. And having your clothes fit, you know, again, is such a huge thing. I know it sounds small, but it's really big. <laughs> actually yeah and just to feel good in your own skin right no but that's uncomfortable you know I, I think the feeling feeling good in your own skin is is um way underestimated it's so mm. important because it's how you show up in the world you know how i show up in the world yeah that's beautiful and so i went i'm using this exercise um as a way to manifest what it is you want because the more we can envision that, like literally when you're putting on your pants in the morning, be like, oh, these are going to be, these are going to fit really well soon. You know, just constantly reinforcing what it would be like when that goal, and not from a place of like, oh, you're bad and you're wrong. I can't believe you gained the weight. You know, not that conversation, but the conversation of like, you know, what you're dreaming into, what you're envisioning um, for how, you know, your summer dresses might look or your summer shirts, you know, or whatever, whatever it is that's going to that you're going to relate to. Um, so even if you're not sharing, um, I'd love for you to, to write down. Now, this could be um, something you do after the call as a practice area, which I would encourage you to do. Take some time really feeling into it um, and writing maybe a paragraph or a few sentences or even a page of what it would feel like um, when you've achieved your, your goal. Because the more we can feel into that, the more we're going to attract it to us. So you'll bring power and velocity uh, and really the manifesting power of the universe to you. I know that sounds a little bit I don't know, ostentatious or um, perhaps uh, woo woo, but uh, I believe that that's true. And I don't think that uh, in any kind of, uh, every, every religion has prayer to some degree, right? And it's, it's a similar thing, you know, when we ask. Oh, that's so sweet. Colette, there's a little message for you. <laughs> Karen, in there. Anyone else want to share um, what it would be like for them? Nice. When they achieve their goal. Anyone else want to share that so we can witness you and hear you and hold space for that? I think for all the people, uh, Jennifer, who aren't on the call, who have registered and want the recording or who are listening on Facebook Live, they're going to resonate with a lot of what we've said, because as we know from the media, uh, and uh, as Karen has already pointed out, uh, we've had a, a year or so in lockdown. And whether it's through comfort eating, um, clinical depression, boredom, mm -hmm. Uh, lack of freedom, you know, food perhaps has been the only thing people can control. And so instead of people or, or the majority of people thinking, right, for the first time, I've got quality time on my on my own, I can get healthy and fit. The opposite seems to have happened for the majority of people. And for whatever reason, we're coming out of lockdown heavier than we went in. So, you know, the help that you're uh talking us through in terms of visualizing, writing it down, having the intent is so important for helping us get back to our, our comfortable, normal selves. Oh, thank you, Dawn, for saying that. And I, I, I think we trust 
we trust the media uh, in such a way that might actually be uh, damaging for ourselves. Uh, and it's time for us really to, to get back to ourselves. And it's going to slowly, I don't know about you, but I can kind of smell it in the air. Spring is coming. You know, it seems very far away still for a lot of us when we have snow. <laughs> and um, But I can see it. I can see the colors and the flowers starting to emerge. And I say that because it's a time for new growth. It's a time for new thinking. And we have to take responsibility, radical responsibility for our health. Our health is in our own hands. And the best way for us to fight against any virus, any disease, whether it's uh, one that's threatening us right now or one in the future or our old age, it's in our hand. And having the correct knowledge, and this is the key, having the correct knowledge about what that means to get healthy and to stay healthy is critical. It, it's, it's a life skill that can literally save your life. And so I'd love to use the remainder of the time that we have together to actually answer any questions that anyone has. Um, I'm a firm believer that eating more plants is undebatable, that that is a good thing to do. Um, we can talk all day about animal protein, we can talk about dairy, we can talk about all kinds of things, but no one's going to dispute the fact that eating vegetables from your garden or eating vegetables from the grocery store that are organic um, are, are bad for you, right? That's just, you know, it's just that we can't really say that that's true. <laughs> everyone can agree at least that vegetables are good for you. So one thing I would love to encourage everyone who's listening to this is to eat more vegetables, to have a variety of color on your plate, and that the, the, the main part of your dish um, be fresh produce and find ways to make the fresh produce uh, filling and satisfying for yourself and um, find new flavors that you love. Um, that is a huge, huge piece for curing your depression and anxiety um, because it's helping build your microbiome, which is directly impacting your brain health. Um, they've correlated this. This is studied. I'm not just making this up. Uh, and we need fiber. Probiotics might help, right? They actually, the jury is not out on that. But what we do know is that the fiber in those vegetables is going to help the good bacteria that your body needs to stay healthy and not only healthy in its immunity, but also healthy in your mind. They need those good bacteria and the good bacteria live and thrive on a variety of different fibers, right? The fiber from a squash is different than a fiber from a cauliflower, which is different than a fiber from an apple. So you need all these different types of fiber in your body to promote a healthy biome. Having a healthy biome is going to help, of course, regular bowel movements, uh, but more than that, it's going to help reinforce a healthy immune system and a healthy brain because you know, depression and anxiety are real and they are plaguing us perhaps even more severely than, than this virus. Um, it's not reported on as much, but suicides, overdoses are at an all-time high. It's quite serious. And we have to find ways to inspire ourselves, to stay active, um, and, to, and to, to have the resilience that's required at this time. I mean, we've had, it's been a long time. It's been a long year. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now and uh, see if anyone has any questions for me. I do want to also offer you all, if you go to my website, uh, there's lots of, there's a, a free seven day uh, lifestyle plan you can sign up for. And uh, it'll be a shopping list and recipes and some instructions on, you know, uh, what you do in the morning and what you do at lunch and what you do at dinner and maybe some funny recipes. So you're welcome to that for free. Uh, you just go to wwwjennifer helene that's Helen with an E, dot com. And uh, you can find that resource if that interests you. But I welcome any questions about anything um, for the remainder of time that we have. Mm -hmm. I think what you were just saying about uh, being able to download some healthy tips and, and co let's um, comment about how we hate routine and we sort of fight uh, routine. But when it's disrupted, you know, we're out of sync. And it reminds me of my Living Foods uh, uh, teacher, Elaine Bruce, who said it's what we do most of the time that counts. So don't beat yourself up. You know, it's about balance. Oh, it's so true. It is about balance. And um, that's my subline in all my emails. Don has you know, seen several of them. It's your daily practice is your strongest medicine. Mm -hmm. So what are you practicing? Um, and that goes from your thought patterns, repetitive thought patterns um, to repetitive things. Like if I'm drinking a lot of water or I'm drinking a lot of soda, that's, pra that's the practice. 
you know, mm-hmm. um, what I'm doing with my body. Am I practicing yoga? Am I sitting down a lot? You know, that's also a practice and there are consequences to it all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you're I'm right. Talk- it's, a, you know, you're right. This- and, t- and talking about uh, practice, uh, interestingly, uh, I mean, for years, many of us have thought that the Harvard study in the 60s, where it said it takes 30 days to create a new habit, uh, has been proved inaccurate. And the, the London uh, College of the College of uh, University College of London said it actually takes 66. And that's a, a recent study that's been done in the last decade. So we need that sort of willpower attitude, which will only take us so far, but we need that sort of intent and positive mental attitude and a co- coach and a, a mentor to help us because 66 days is a long time, isn't it? You know, if we think that most people give up their new year's resolutions within 26 or 27 days. Absolutely. I think accountability is key, and, and we know from the two mo- notoriously, the most notorious behavioral change methodologies um, in the Alcoholics Anonymous model mm. um, is is the most famous, and then just after that is the Weight Watchers model, and we know that those are the most successful in behavioral change, and the reason why is because of the support. In AA, you have a sponsor. In Weight Watchers, you know you had a lecturer. Um, and there's, they, they build a beautiful community actually inside of their, uh, their new technology. Um, but that's, that's the accountability and the app holds you accountable in Mint Watchers now, you know, cause you're counting your points. So you're, you're, you're held accountable in a different way, but, but the accountability piece is key. And that's why coaching and mentoring, um, or even, you know, buddy system that's reliable. Um, if you have somebody that you, you want to pair up with, uh, who's willing to get on the phone with you. And I mean, literally every day or at least once a week to to really um listen and remind you of who you are and who you're becoming any questions at all um feel free to ask i'd, I'd love to, to to share anything that i that i can with you if you have any questions about anything hmm. oh yes important network don i don't know which which you It is critical. Oh, you're welcome for the reminders. <laughs> we need others to remind us because we don't always see ourselves in the reflection of light that the others see us in. It's really well, helpful. we're creating our own little support network here in your calls, aren't we, Jennifer? You know, the, some more people <laughs> have come on this call and more will come on the next call. Um, so yeah. while everybody's thinking it, it while well, we've got um, Jennifer in the hot seat, if anybody has another question, I'll just remind you, same time uh, in a month's time, 3rd of March, we will have our third out of the series of five calls with Jennifer. So you can think of your questions and come prepared. Um, any other point that you want to raise in terms of declaring your health uh, goals that is going to make us that little bit more successful before we see you in a month's time, Jennifer? Absolutely. Um, well, I do want to, hopefully all of you will be able to join us on the next call so we can check in and see um, where you are. Um, and that means not so much success or failure, but like where, you know, where you are, um, uh, you know, on the spectrum of where you were today and then where you'll be in a month. So I do wanna invite you to join us um, March 3rd so that we can, you know, be here to, to see how you've been doing. Um, don't hesitate also to reach out to me um, either via social media or uh, directly uh, via email, which you'll find on the contact page um, on my website. Um, it's also very simple, my email address, jenhelene at gmail.com. That's a great way to get in touch with me. That's Jen with two N's. Um, the reason why we called it declare is because it's important that you declare it to yourself instead of commit or state or uh, intend, you know, declare a declaration, like the Declaration of Independence, the United States of America. Um, a declaration is something much greater than just a statement. So like once and for all, this is going to happen if you're really committed to it. And so Colette, I encourage you to just choose one goal um, and achieve it, a small one, and then keep, keep doing that um, so that you can see for yourself. <sighs> and you also may need to enroll some people around you as part of this declaration. You may need their support. And in Colette's case, you, their support means just leave me alone, <laughs> you know, like let me have my space. 
um, in Karen's, uh, you know, it could be, I have another client, for example, um, she has a lot of people in her home that eat food that takes her off track, you know, so, you know, she needs their support in actually moving those foods into a different space, you know, or, or whatever works for you in terms of your structure. Part of this declaration may also include enrolling in others. And so whatever that looks like, I just encourage you to, to, to declare it from a loving place. Sometimes we think about declarations as, you know, something bold and off-putting, but from a loving place, um, like I could really use your help with this and support. And so you may also want to enroll uh, a buddy um, in your life, like a, if you have a sister or somebody who can not judge you, but who can really just be there for you. So these are all just suggestions in how you can set yourself up for success, setting up your own kind of accountability system. And that could also look like uh, giving yourself a little bit of a treat, you know, Karen, like you could be strict for six days and, and on the seventh day, maybe you have something that you've been missing. Uh, on our last call, we talked about bread. You know, like this one person, she just loved bread and she was like, I just don't, I don't really want to give it up, but I know it's not really leading me to my thing. But she's like, I'm going to have bread on Sundays. You know, that's my, that's going to be my celebration day. And sometimes that can create a more sustainable long-term goal than, you know, being strict and, and when that, I'm not saying that that's right for you. It's just an example as part of the declaration. How can you set yourself up for success and what do you need? in order to maintain that success. So I want you to ask yourself those questions. Um, and by all means, please share anything that's come up um, from those questions. Yeah, and of course, uh, the little reward or treat uh, in, in your instance, Karen, maybe, doesn't have to be a, a particular food. It could be a particular top that you've been, yeah. uh, had your eye on as a, a reward for your, your effort. People often Absolutely. think that their reward is food, don't they, Jennifer? But that's the slippery slope, slope sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. You know, deprivation is a tricky thing. Um, but I love I love the idea of, you know, I used to say, you know, go get a massage, but that's not possible, yeah. you know, or even treating yourself to a bath or, um, yeah, rewarding yourself with something that, that you really enjoy. Mm. Yeah, something small, something big. Well, you have my full support in the declaration around your, your goals. I'm so delighted that you were here with me today. Okay. And um, I encourage you to take steps every single day in your practice, because that is your strongest medicine towards your goal. And if you need additional ideas or support, please reach out to me and we will see you in a month's time. Yeah, look forward to it. Stay safe, everybody. And thank you very much, Jennifer. It's a pleasure as usual. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Take care.